Welcome back. The row between Ethiopia's federal government and the Tigray region has been in the news lately after a regional election was held in the fires of the federal government. Ethiopia is the second most populous country in Africa with 110 million people. Now, there are actually fears that the instability in the country could destabilize what had been one of Africa's most promising economic development stories. The Associate Practice Lead for Sub-Saharan Africa, Dr. Frontier in London, Matt Kinniger joins us now to discuss the implications of this. Good afternoon, Matt. Thank you for joining us on the program. Now, what are the origins of the conflict? And is there a risk of a full-blown civil war that sees Ethiopia breaking apart? Uh, yes, well, thank you for having me on the show today. Uh, this is an extremely complex issue in Ethiopia, and it stems from the desires among Ethiopia's very diverse regions uh, wanting to assert their autonomy in accordance with the 1995 constitution. Uh, but these are uh, sort of co um, counterbalanced by the, the central government's desire to stress national unity and prioritize policies that stress national unity. Uh, this most recent uh, escalation in tensions was triggered by an illegal referendum that was held in September. Um, and the pace at which things are moving is quite worrying. So it is quite a rapidly developing situation. It's difficult to see how this pans out really over the next uh, couple of months or couple of weeks actually, because news and communication out of Tigray has been uh, cut off. Um, but really, the outcome really hinges on uh, the extent to which the Tigrayan government or the Tigrayan people resist the armed intervention by the, the central government. Our base case is that it won't result in a na nationwide civil war nor a breakup of the country, but it could. Uh, uh, it's a very fast de uh, developing situation and things could spiral out of control. Now, given the disruptions caused by the coronavirus pandemic, what would be the outlook for the economy in 2021? And does the rise in regional tensions actually jeopardize the country's yes. prospects? Yes, so uh, we, we don't think that this conflict presents an immediate threat to the economy. And this is provided that it doesn't result in a nationwide uh, civil conflicts. Uh, and this is because uh, most of the economic activity is centered around Addis Ababa and the corridor to Djibouti. So that's the main transport corridor. And we don't see this uh, recent increase in escalate in tensions affecting those areas. Uh, our base case is that the economy will avoid recession this year and continue to grow next year at around about 4.5%. And this will mainly be driven by infrastructure development by the government. So the construction industry will really benefit. However, we do think that this uh, this rise in tensions could delay the liberalization of certain sectors. So the government is trying to reduce the role of the state in the economy. Say, for example, it was looking to privatize the telecom sector. Uh, and this is likely to be delayed over the coming months because the government is focused on solving this uh, political crisis. So this could result in less foreign direct investment into certain sectors into the economy. But apart from the rise in regional tensions now, what other factors uh, affect the operating environment should businesses monitor over the coming months? Yeah, so this rise in tensions is only one thing that businesses need to be concerned about. There are longer standing challenges that businesses will need to uh, deal with over the coming year. So one is uh, foreign currency shortages. Recently, the government has announced that uh, fuel will be removed from its priority list of products being imported. Now only pharmaceutical products remain as a top priority for accessing forex. So access to foreign currency is difficult. Inflation is forecast to remain in double digits in 2021. So we're expecting a rate of 17% next year. Um, and uh, we are also likely to see a delay in the uh, the coming online of the uh, Grand uh, Renaissance Dam, which was meant to increase power supplies to Ethiopia and spur economic development. Uh, and this is because of tensions between Ethiopia and uh, Egypt. Uh, but we don't see this happening um, uh, before the end of the year or early next year. And this will mean that access to electricity will be difficult for Associate. the foreseeable future. All right, thank you, Matt Kindiger, Associate Practice Lead for Sub-Saharan Africa at Docker Frontier. Do enjoy the rest of your day.